What up folks, it's Alex here. Now, whether you're thinking about buying Shadow, are currently waiting for activation, or have already been activated, stick around, because in this video, we're gonna go through the basics of getting Shadow installed and up and running on your own Windows device. Number one, optimize your connection. Your actual connection to the internet will have a massive effect on how much enjoyment you get from Shadow. If everyone else is doing an awesome job, i.e. Shadow and your internet provider, but your network at home sucks, you're not going to have a great time with Shadow and there's no one to blame. It's because your connection between your device and your router isn't up to par. So try and get that sorted first. If you nail that down, everything else should fall into place. So which connection is best? Well, Ethernet is the absolute best option when using Shadow. If you have to use Wi-Fi, go for the 5 GHz. 2.4 GHz has better range, but is older, crowded, which could mean interference, and considerably slower than the other two. Another tip, if you're using Wi-Fi, try and get as close to your router as you can. The closer you are to the router, the less interference you're gonna have, the more reliable your connection is going to be. Number two, installing the application. Now, when you received your activation email, there should have been links in there to download the applications, but don't worry if you can't find them. All you need to do is head over to shadow.tech, click on the little dude in the top right hand corner, Log in, click on apps from the menu on the left hand side and you've got a list here of the shadow applications. We've got Windows 32 and 64 as well as Mac OS and Android. If you're not too sure whether you're using a 32-bit or a 64-bit version of Windows, it's easy to find out. Click on File Explorer or My Computer, whichever you want to call it. Now on the left hand side you should see this PC. Right click and click on Properties you'll see system type and it will tell you whether you're using a 64-bit or a 32-bit operating system. Once you know which version of Windows you're using, download the application, run the installation wizard, and then the application will be installed and ready to use. Number three, the Shadow Launcher. You'll get the Shadow icon on your desktop, as well as Shadow within your Start menu. If we double click to open the application, and then it's gonna ask you to log in. Log in with the same email address and password you used to log into the website. The Shadow Launcher will be your only gateway into your Shadow. Whenever you want to access your Shadow, you'll do so from this launcher. Now, I know the big red start button is tantalizing, but don't press it just yet, because oh, there's a few man. key things we need to look at in here before you actually boot into your Shadow PC. Number four, setting your bandwidth. Internet speeds are measured in megabits per second and this measurement is known as your bandwidth. Simply put, this is the amount of data that can be sent across the internet to your device. The higher the bandwidth, the faster the internet, and the more data that can be received per second. In the Shadow Launcher, you'll see your bandwidth configuration. Shadow will attempt to set this automatically, but it can be a little inconsistent. I'd recommend setting this manually to be sure. Once you've turned the automatic config off, you'll then see the allocated bandwidth, which you can now set manually. The higher the number, the more data will be transferred and the more data means better overall image quality. But how high you can set this will depend entirely on the speed of your internet connection. If you head over to your internet browser and go to google.com, simply type in speed test as one word and hit search, and you'll see this box at the top of the screen. If for whatever reason you don't see this internet speed test box at the top, scroll down and something like speedtest.net or fast.com will also do the job. Click Run Speed Test, and your home internet broadband speed will be tested. On screen is a table to give you a rough idea of what to set your bandwidth to. For example, if your download speed test showed between 30 and 35 megabits per second, I'd recommend starting in shadow with about 20. You can always increase this later, but it's better to start low and work your way up than start too high. If you set it too low, you'll just end up with image quality that isn't quite as good as it could be, but your actual playing experience will be really, really good. If you set it too high, you'll be trying to send too much information over the network, the network won't be able to handle it, and you'll end up with a laggy, unplayable, infuriating mess. So that pretty much covers the essentials of the launcher. So now it's time, finally, to hit that big red button. Now when you hit start, the first thing it's going to do is search for your shadow. When it's found your shadow, it'll start it, so it'll start to boot it, and then you'll get a notification that it's connecting to your shadow, and then shortly after, you should be taken into your shadow desktop. 
All Shadow devices come with Windows 10 pre-installed, but the actual user setup hasn't yet been completed. That's up to you. So the first time you boot Shadow, you'll land on the Windows 10 setup screen. Now I can't show you how to do it because I don't have access to that myself, but it's dead easy. It's a wizard, just follow the steps through. Be very careful when you're selecting your language because that, that can be annoying to change later. If you do find yourself getting stuck, pop a look in the description below. There's a link to a quick guide that Shadow have made to help you get through it. And once that's all done, you'll end up on your Windows 10 desktop and you'll be ready to roll. Once you're on your Shadow, it's exactly the same as any other Windows 10 device. Boot up the internet, do some web browsing, install your favorite apps, maybe play some games, get some work done, whatever you want to do. When you're finished with your Shadow, what you should do is shut it down in exactly the same way as a normal PC. So you click on the start icon at the bottom left, click on the power button, and then click on shut down. If your shadow is downloading something or you want to leave it running while you turn your computer off, you can do so by doing control, windows and F to take it out of full screen, and then you can just close the application. And that's it folks. Hopefully that was useful and now you're ready to start using your shadow. If it was useful, please do give me a thumbs up. If you've got any queries, questions or feedback, pop them in the comments below. If you want to see more, you want to stick around, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be doing plenty more of these shadow tutorials. We're going to have a look at connecting your headset, connecting controllers, using the mobile apps, as well as how to become a Twitch streamer on your shadow PC. Also, make sure you check out the shadow discord. Again, link in the description below. The shadow discord is a chat room where you can go meet like-minded people, just for some general banter, find some new people to play games with, and there's also a really, really useful community support section. So make sure you check that out. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.